Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the latest edition of the fastest car in the world challenge. What would have happened if Duesenberg didn't go the way of the Dodo and produced cars up to now? Well, you are going to find out as you are following the footsteps of that company and try to break every Landspeak production vehicle record up to today. And this is going to take place in the very latest version of Automation 4.2 with all the new changes to the engine designer and the light campaign. It's going to be a great challenge and in this very first episode we're going to check out the rules so that you can play along and give you all the information that is required for you to take part in it and share your videos of it. Alright, let's take a look. The goal of this challenge is to produce the fastest production car in the world each decade in a rather difficult 20 times difficulty multiplayer campaign setting um, that you pretty much can define yourself. Your fastest car ever delivered to a buyer is evaluated at the start of each new decade in January. For example January 1970 or January year 2000. You try to survive until the end of the campaign and gain as much speed score as possible. We're going to elaborate on what speed score actually means. Let's talk about the campaign setup first though. You start a new campaign in the year 1946. You choose freely your starting country, your competitor strength, your cash, the engine tech, car tech as well as factories and plots, volatility and dealerships. Just set it up as you wish. There are only two parameters that are set in stone. With your setup, you need to start in 1946 and you need to reach a difficulty multiplier of larger than 20. To make the challenge as streamlined and quick to play as possible, uh, we are making a few simplifications here. You are allowed to make only one model per decade, with as many facelifts and trims as you deem necessary. Of course, a new model needs to come out before the decade is over so that you can score with it in that new decade. Multiple engine families are allowed, of course. So the rules are only one model per decade and, well, just as an example, your very first model that you're going to make is a model for the 1950s. That is all of the 1950s, so up till 1959. That doesn't mean, however, that you can't release a new model in 1958, but that is your 1960s model then. So let's dive deeper into this weird speed score thing that we talked about briefly there. Your score is based on a multiplier that we are going to take a look at very soon, and then the speed that you achieved minus the benchmark speed of that decade. Your total score then is the sum of all seven decade scores. If you are um, scoring yourself in miles per hour, you need to multiply by 1.609 in order to get the speed score in kilometers per hour, which is how we measure our EPs. So um, also you need to note that if you're too slow or too late, don't worry too much because yes, this is tough and uh, negative scores are actually allowed. If you have one miss in there, so don't worry too much. I think plenty of people will. So what are those score multipliers and the benchmark speeds, you ask? Well, let's take a look. So for the first two decades, the 1950s and 1960s, you see that the uh, score multiplier is a 1.0. You're going to get, for each kilometer an hour that you are faster than the benchmark speed, you're going to get one speed score. From 1970 to 1990, you're getting half a point per kilometer an hour faster. And in the 2000s and 2010s, the last decade that we are scoring, you only get a quarter of a point for each kilometer an hour being faster. Just to have an idea of what these fast cars are, well, for the 1950s we have the Aston Martin DB4 GT. For the 1960s we have the Ferrari 365 GTV slash 4 Daytona. And then for the 70s we have the Ferrari GT4 Berlinetta Boxer. And then we have the F40 for the 80s, we have the McLaren F1 for the 90s, and we have the Shelby SSC Aero for the zeros. And then we use, instead of the um, 2010s till 2020 score, we actually use, to make it a little harder, the most recent 
current top speed lang record for a production car and that is the bugatti chiron uh, super sport doing 490 90 kilometers an hour now most importantly let's put it all together in an example calculation so that you know exactly how to proceed and calculate your speed score so let's assume we are in the 1990s and the fastest car you have delivered to a buyer by January 1990 has been a 255.3 miles per hour car because you are American. So now let's calculate your decade score. For that we need to look in the 1990s table for the benchmark. The benchmark speed is 240 miles per hour and your score multiplier is 0.5 all right for so the decade score that you achieve is 0.5 as the decade multiplier times the difference between your speed and the benchmark speed which is 255.3 minus 240 and then the um, difference between those is being multiplied by the conversion factor between miles per hour and kilometers per hour which is 1.609 outcomes a decade score of 12.31 points. Congratulations, you didn't suck. But killer up, but killer up, what speed does do, do I use? What what does count? Well, you know, in automation 4.2, top speed is calculated as the speed of the car that uh, is reached after 60 seconds of full throttle. And um, of course, for land speed record runs, that is not really that accurate or good measure to use. And that is where a little bit of a twist comes into play here. And uh, it means that we need to travel to the Deluan Salt Pan, Deluan Salt Flats, to do proper tests of your record breaking cars. And that is a test track that you can download for your game. And I have linked the track in the video description down below. But be aware, you can only use the salt flats if you have access to the lure. Otherwise, you need to use the top speed that is given by the UI, i.e. the top speed or the speed rather that the car reaches after 60 seconds. That's a bit of a handicap. So let's take a look at who has access to what. It is boiling down to something rather simple. If you start in Gazmir or Hedvesia, you gain access to the salt flats in 1990. So the first run that you can use it for is your 1990 speed record run. If you start in Farinia, in Ahana or in Dalua, you are considered to have access to the salt flats right from the start. This little Let's Play series is one that I want you to play along and also share. So please go ahead and produce one episode per decade, just like I'm going to do, and share that with me before my um, version of it airs, as uh, that is going to be linked in the video, my video description, so that people watching this series can check out your attempt at it as well. There will be one episode per decade, and each one will be ending with the decade score being calculated right at the start of the new decade. So keep it to that format and I will share your videos in my video descriptions below. And well, not below this one, but below each decade uh, episode that I'm going to produce. Also use these hashtags, please, so that other people can search for it and find your playthroughs. And in case you don't know, those are just written in the video description and YouTube will automatically pick those up and they will appear in search results if uh, you're using that. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you are cooking up in terms of theory crafting and execution and uh, see you struggle and or not uh, be bewildered by how well everything is going. Um, or how catastrophic you're failing, because that is very much a possibility. It has become a little harder after all. But uh, this is a bit of an extreme challenge, and I'm looking forward to seeing some extreme um, shit being concocted by, by you guys. One thing to note is that this will be a weekly release schedule. So one episode per decade and per week. 
So that means that my 1950s episode, the very first one of this Let's Play, is going to come out one week from the release of this video. And then every week thereafter, same day, same time, there will be another episode. You can share with me your videos that I'm supposed to link in the video description, either by posting it right as I release it in the comment section, or ahead of time by emailing me the link, and I can put it in there right from the start. But I think the easiest one will be to just share it in the comments, and I will be quick to put it in. And with that, I hope you enjoy, and I shall see you guys next time.